Hi everybody, this is Nathan at Rain Networks, and uh, thanks for joining us for our uh, YouTube videos here today. Um, we're going to start out a multi-part series on the Bitdefender Gravity Zone Cloud System. We have a lot of customers and resellers using this system. It's a very cool and unique system, and um, a lot of times people just struggle with kind of how to get started, where to start, um, to get their company set up, to get their antivirus deployed, and that kind of thing. And so we're going to do a video series on all that. And so what I've kind of done is I've set up a test scenario here where I've created a company for one of our employees called Chad's Computer Company. And Chad's basically uh, mimicking a, uh, you know, like a computer repair shop that's going to use uh, Bitdefender Gravity's on cloud to load antivirus for his clients. So we've made an account for Chad, and when we create an account on our side, what happens is, is that person gets sent an email from Bitdefender. And that email looks a little bit like this one right here. So it basically gives you a link to the console, control center address, um, and then it has your email address and password here that you would use to log in. So let's go ahead and, and log in here as Chad. And here we go. We are getting logged in for the first time to the Bitdefender Gravity Zone Cloud with uh, Chad's computer company login here. And you'll see when we uh, when we first log in here, it's going to initialize our account and take us to the uh, initial dashboard here. So we'll give it a second to get through the loading process. Make the lawyers happy here. going to just bypass the uh, welcome screen here so we get into gravity zone and here we go so this is the initial dashboard that you uh, that you get into um, as you can see they have these uh, little applets that run here so you it'll eventually once he has machines up and running on the software it'll show him like you know this one up here malware status for your computers you know which ones of my computers do I have that are infected with something um, computer protection status down here in the lower right this one tells you you know here's all the computers that I have maybe I've got three or four of them that don't have current updates so maybe I need to go do something on those computers to ensure that they have um, current and recent updates so this little dashboard is kind of handy and um, you can actually uh, add and remove so you can go to add portlet here and you know let's say they have a whole bunch of stock portlets in here that you can um, pick let's just pick one here how about uh, top 10 infected endpoints I want to know who the top 10 infected computers are so I kind of know whose computers I need to go you know run scans on or do some kind of removal on or something to that effect so you can add and remove these little portlets really easily where I normally have people start though in this is in the company section because what you're going to want to do since you're uh, likely a reseller is you're going to want to set up all the customers in here who you want to protect so let's just set up a test company under Chad's account here so we'll just go ABC computer and I'll just put a fake address in here just for the sake of giving us some data. You'll notice as well, it does let you upload a logo so that you can co-brand um, your portal. And I haven't done that yet on Chad's uh, uh, Chad's account yet, but we will be doing that um, as we go. So this is where, as we uh, as we pick, you know, what kind of customer it is. So the customer refers to end user, partner being if we wanted to give this person rights to set up sub companies under their company. So the whole idea here is that this is a multi-tenant uh, type. Uh, solution and so Chad can set up companies to live underneath his that he can then manage and then license here down here if we actually had a license code we could go ahead and stick that license key in here uh, for now we're just gonna go with trial but this is where you would issue a license uh, to your customer and where you would put that license in here okay so we now have set up an account for ABC uh, computer underneath Chad's computer, which means Chad now can manage uh, this account. And if we wanted to, we could go in and we could set up, you know, 
10 more companies in here. And so a lot of times that's the first thing that people do when they get into Gravity Zone is get all your companies set up. If you have license keys for those companies, get them put in here. This is really the first place to start. One of the other things in here, you may have noticed at the bottom of this company uh, setup here, is when we add a new company, is we can add an account for that company. Now, I did not do that for the ABC computer, but the scenario in which you would add an account would be if you want to give that person a login to manage their company. So the logic here is like this. Let's say we set up a company called, you know, XYZ Landscaping. And the owner of XYZ Landscaping wants to be able to log in and have the same ability to maybe look at his computers that uh, Chad has from his management console. This is how we can delegate that person a login to do the same exact, uh, they, they can log into the same portal here that we're seeing. However, they're only going to see what is uh, pertinent to uh, to their company so he'll only see the company uh, the machines for XYZ landscape so I'm just gonna go ahead and put in some uh, info here there we go oops I put those in there backwards all right so anyways, I just wanted to reinforce the, the point that when you first get logged in, you know, you get through the dashboard section, come right to companies and get your company set up. Um, the reason that is, is the next part we're going to go to is the network section. And the network section is where we actually browse um, and we can start setting up our containers for computers. Well, we can't set up those containers for the computers that we want to protect if the companies aren't created. So that's why the company creation uh, process should probably always be done first, and it's a great place to start. That's going to be the end of this video. In our next video, we're going to get into how to set up um, installation packages, how to do tasks, and in future videos, we're going to go through how to set up policies. Thanks for watching, and we'll march on to the next video.